Welcome to Meanwhile in Lulu City, episode 5. 4. 4! Damn! Oh well. Uh, so, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. We kind of forgot about the podcast. We didn't get episode 3 up on YouTube yet, and uh, on SoundCloud we could only have two episodes up at the same time, and things got complicated. We're, we're learning. Yeah. We're going to be pros eventually. And which pros are here today? Oh, it's, uh, it's me, Anton, the artist. I'm Daniel, I'm a guy. I'm Joel, I'm also a guy. Yeah, and then Nils, I'm also an artist. <laughs> <laughs> so two guys and two artists. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a sitcom or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, first of all, we asked that on Twitter if anyone had any questions. Yeah. But we didn't give them a lot of time, so we only got one question. And what was the question? Uh, the question was how how did we get started and uh, and meet up and stuff. Right. But I think we already discussed that. And it's once. a long story. Yeah. And it's also a two part story, because the gang we have now was not the gang that started. Yeah. But oh, it's such a long story. Can we get like, just like I, a, a, we, we went to school together. Uh, a lot of us lot went of to us. school together, and uh, that's where it all started at university here in Kovda. Yeah, went the to the game bis- development yeah. course. I studied design and started the company together with no people that are left no. today. No. I think no. They all went on so, to greater things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> greener uh, pastures. Yeah. But Actually, uh, yes. but me and Daniel was what uh, we were there at least. Yeah, mm-hmm. you were working at another company here in the incubator. Yeah, um, we're making like an RTS MMO kind of thing that didn't really work out. Uh, I was only part of it at the very end. Yeah, and um, Daniel was very difficult to convince. It took us like two years or something. No, I was uh, doing freelance stuff. Yeah, uh, for two years and. Uh, um, um. <laughs> How yeah, did I you, get you? You also I worked on an MMO at some point that yeah. didn't pan out either. There, yeah, there was, I was a time. Hired, I was hired by a company in Malmö. Yeah. But then uh, Daniel Kaplan hired me here to make a flash port of Garden of Carnage. Yeah. There was a time where everyone wanted to make an MMO, but these days mm. MMOs are like. Or flash games. Or flash games, yeah. That's well, the two options. Yeah, the big two. <laughs> I didn't want to make an MMO, but. <laughs> no, but the company. The, yeah. And Nils was hired through. Uh, yeah. we, we put out a request for, for uh, animations, I think. Well, uh, actually, uh, I, I think I, I was just, um, just kind of. Uh, uh, lucky getting my getting in at the right time because I I were I had been I'd finished up my course at the university I was looking for uh, for jobs I, I applied at kind of the right yeah, time and I, I we, got we needed someone for it to do one <coughs> yeah exactly that was my first that was my first oh, wasn't uh, it magica no uh, I I started I started like just a couple of months before Mag- magica and uh, and when we say magica we mean the the mobile version that we did like yeah. a spin off yeah, yeah but because of my <laughs> My pro team, <laughs> like you know, my internship, yeah, it was uh, on on um, I- Italy. So that's that's kind of why Italy is special for me because yeah. it was my. Am I misremembering, or didn't you make uh, uh, an animation for uh, for Magica? Was as, as a test, as a test, no, for example. No, no, we had he, other he people I, uh, who did. did I remember that. Nils, Nils came here with his like portfolio pictures in like a folder or something, mm-hmm. and we were like, we need someone to draw this two D cartoony kind of style for it to do one that we already had, and uh, yeah, he was pretty much the only viable one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. The, the, and then uh, it turned out he was actually crazy. With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you're stuck with me. Um, and the, the other guys, uh, they were here before me, except Stefan. Stefan has been on and off as well. Uh, he's our programmer. He's the programmer. Uh, I think we worked with him on s something very early. I don't even remember. But that was like eight years ago now. Uh, and then he's been hired for different projects, and then he was hired full time s like three or four years ago. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been back and forth with who is actually on Velocity. But it's it's been stable for like almost four years now, I think. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, Matthias was here before me, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Uh, but before before all of all of this, we were like at one point I think twelve people, uh, twelve like students from the university uh, that you know were trying to start a company, and then we were down to seven, and and that was Ludacity for a while, for like mm -hmm. a year. That team made Bob came in pieces. <coughs> I was on there for a while mm. for free. Really? For free? Yeah, I had nothing to do, and you guys were still on like, uh, uh, yeah, going half to school, half to work, oh, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Anyway, so that's that's uh, that's the story. Basically, we had a, we're pretty lucky uh, lucky around here because we have this game development university, and then there's the uh, uh, business incubation and yeah. all all this business help. Uh, that helps you start a business here, like the yeah. what's it called, the county or what's the commune in mm. uh, um, municipality. Municipality, yeah. <coughs> yeah, uh, and it's a cool place, and there are a lot of game studios here. I think there are yeah. twenty-five game studios here in this small city. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty all fun when you think of think yeah. about it. You have all these uh, neighbors, like the goat simulator guys and uh, goat sim guys, battle right guys. Uh, who else? Pieces Interactive are pretty cool as well, yeah. um, and a lot of new new startups. I think they're gonna yeah. make some cool stuff. Like we right now, we're sharing uh, this space with uh, what's it called, Flamebait. Yeah, Flamebait. We don't know much about them, but we're making like an. I I sometimes say hello to them in the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're making a game where you draw art and people buy it. Like you're like. Oh uh, okay, cool. So that's that's that. Next topic. through them like one at the time first of all we released princess remedy 2 like mm -hmm. the sequel prequel heap of trouble yes yeah. uh, uh, and the idea with that one was that the first one was made very quickly during a game jam yeah in four uh, days and the graphics only in two days actually yeah and then we thought okay so we're gonna make bunch of episodes so we spent some time making sort of an engine for it mm -hmm. in unity so we now have the capacity to make more episodes quite mm -hmm. yeah. fast however however <laughs> didn't really sell that well no. didn't really warrant mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. an episode three i think but yeah. we'll see we might do it just because it's so fast yeah it's mm -hmm. fun fun to work with and fast to make so now that we have the ending hopefully it'll be yeah. fast the right. peop people people will still play the like the first one a lot but don't don't know about the sequel or anything mm -hmm. people like uh, the princess remedy series and uh, they really like the second one because it's pretty much princess remedy again I mean, it's, yeah. it's got the 66 reviews on Steam and they're 100% positive. <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. actually pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, we have very good reviews for all our, our games, but yeah. they're not selling. No. Yeah, but uh, for Princess Remedy 2, we just decided to make 
the same game again and it worked because mm. it's <laughs> people wanted the, the it first one was so same. short so yeah, you could still the, the we, we did change some yeah, things it's, added it's, some a, things. it's a plus like I, I remedy yeah. plus yeah like. it's nothing um, you can have a companion and you can have oh. and you can dance that's that's the two additions yeah. and the <laughs> and the more bosses yeah the, the like yeah. sub bosses more ability for each area mm. but yeah. it's nothing uh, shocking <laughs> I really like the boss edition, and uh, mm. I like drawing them. And uh, mm. I draw half of them, and, and Nils draw half of them. But maybe for this, for episode three, not to not make like seventy songs. No, <laughs> <laughs> no right. That's the that was a, a like, weird thing. <laughs> weird I, thing I don't even know anything. how many people are aware that each one of the 64 NPCs have their own ending song and dance steps. Well, I've, mm. I've seen uh, like players who, who like go back and wait, does, mm. does this mean that, oh my god, yes, it mm. means that every, every, every person has their own dance song. We're very good at wasting <laughs> development time yeah. on shit like that. Yeah. Actually, so... I added oh. an entire first-person shooter mode. Right, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, uh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, but uh, talk talking. about that. That that's in yeah. heap of trouble. Yeah. So the graphics went very quickly to make. So I had some time to spare. So I threw together this Wolfenstein-like thing, mm. first person, uh, and it's basically a, it's a pretty small area with a few fights and a boss fight. It's just there for fun. Didn't you try that in VR as well? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I made a Google Cardboard <laughs> VR version. Right. Uh, you walk forward by looking down and you walk backwards by looking up. Oh, the Pucoscope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, Pucoscope. Beat, I beat the whole game in that <laughs> mood. That's actually quite cool. I couldn't manage the first, the, the first level in the Pucoscope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, I was when when we mentioned all the different uh, songs and stuff. There was a question on Steam. Uh, we have this QA. Uh, uh, we had we had only one question at the start, but there was a question on Steam like, what's the difference between the difficulties in Remedy Two? And mm. one of the differences is that the songs are uh, the DDR <coughs> songs are more different in yeah in hard. The difference between. Um I don't remember if the difficulties are called easy or hard or normal no, and hard. But I think it's normal, hard and death. Mm. <coughs> hard is uh, changes all the enemies and all the bosses' uh, behavior and bullet patterns. And it also makes all the songs at the end more difficult. And so uh, new content, basically. Yeah, basically. Uh, the overall the layout of most of the fights is also different. Uh, death, however, is simply hard but sped up I think 25 or 30 percent mm. and uh, enemies deal 25 percent more damage than normal so death is like hard plus mm. everything's fast and you die quickly okay? mm. some people think death is only faster but mm-hmm. it's actually quite a bit more damaging yeah uh, in remedy in remedy one I think death mean uh, master which is the same thing means that the game is 30 percent faster and you take 50 percent more damage Mm-hmm. Which was quite ridiculous for the bosses in Remedy 2, so I had to tone it down a little. Maybe we'll have a, a podcast about Remedy series at some point, but this is uh, the, the summary podcast, so yeah. let's move on. That was Princess Remedy 2. And uh, Rem or Daniel, you released a game? Mm. It's a game about <laughs> the strawberry. <laughs> oh, Strawberry Jam. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I finished uh, the first chapter of Strawberry Jam, which is a game I worked a little bit on and off uh, for like nine years. <laughs> but the actual workload is like one year. I remember in university you wrote 
the uh, script, or you wrote a novel. Yes, I wrote I wrote a children's novel that in 2009 uh, became the basis for like a test, and the test was mostly just a bunch of uh, skybox uh, things and NPCs, but eventually um, I started turning it into a game and. It got really out of control, and I had to cut like lots of things from the design. Mm. And in um, let's see, in 2012 at Snow More Sweden, I said that I was gonna finish the game, and then I had I had to do a bunch of other stuff instead. And I made made Muri instead. Mm. And I was <clears throat> in my spare time, and then I tried picking the game up again, but. Uh, even though it looks like a very simple game, it's extremely difficult. It's the most advanced game I've ever, ever made. There's it's full of very difficult systems with NPCs and dialogue. There's a, there's a lot of like very fine details that always go Yeah, there's, on. It's, it's very short, but it's crammed full of easter eggs mm. and uh, full of details. Like, uh, I tried to expand on the, um, <coughs> the weight of it. The way the dialogue modifies itself depending on what you do or who you talk to or in what order you talk to them. Um, in in uh, in uh, IG, I had that kind of stuff where the story shapes itself after a player, but here it goes into much finer detail. I think there's like 120 variables just for what you say to people mm. in the first chapter. Uh, I remember when we talked about it some years ago that the idea was to have uh, a village full of life full of mm. uh, agents that that mm. could you know had had their own life so to speak their own day yeah. and eventually there were me- like there were lots of different designs and I had to design one of them and what I decided on was like a linear adventure but with uh, NPCs that had um, <clears throat> not really side quests but uh, had a lot to say, depending on when you talk to them, and they also go around talking to each other. So it's more like the illusion that there is something much bigger. But do their um, emotions and feelings change? Uh, at first, I was looking at um, different ways to change the player character's emotions, and sort of like uh, Pac-Man too. <laughs> 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 um, so That's a great game. <laughs> yeah. So in the, the end, there, there the is adventure yeah the adventure Pac-Man. There is uh, the characters can have different moods, but in the end, it's mad. It doesn't really matter. I don't remember if there are. There is one point in the story where uh, the main character is sad and has uh, sad expressions and uh, doesn't really want to talk to people at that moment. But that depends on, like, it's story based. It's not something that happens emergently. Mm which was the idea from the start, but that sounds like an impossible amount of job. <laughs> it's a pretty serene game, like it has, yeah. a, it has a lot of mood, but you also feel like uh, a lot of things are going to happen in the following episodes, but not that much happens in the first episode. Yeah, the first episode is mostly setting things up, and the idea is that there is an overarching plot that isn't even touched upon in the first episode, that uh, gets a lot more serious. Uh, and the idea is to establish the idea that this is a rather serious setting, but I don't full of talking fruits. Yeah, full of talking fruit. So, uh, are you thinking about actually making chapter two? <clears throat> uh, well, I have loosely planned the rest of the chapters um, and uh, two and three in a little more detail, but I don't know if I'm gonna do them. Or when I'm gonna do them because <clears throat> the biggest part of making this game is just making all the systems and making the content mostly comes down to writing and writing takes a really long time especially since I have higher standards than in my previous games um, so I don't I don't know how long another chapter is gonna take there are supposed to be like around eight chapters but Considering how long the first one took, I'm just afraid that if I make another chapter, I might as well have to finish the rest. And then I'm looking at like a 20-year project, and 
that's pretty stupid to go about in Game Maker because in like 10 years Game Maker there may not exist a computer in the world that can, can play Game Maker anymore and it's way too big to remake in any anything else actually Game Maker came out with wasn't it called Game Maker 2 or something or Studio yeah, 2, Studio two yeah. or something like and it actually looked awesome I thought it looked great yeah it, it looks like they enough. actually tried this time <laughs> yeah Studio was just a remake of yeah. 7 yeah or whatever, but Studio 2 is, yeah, I'm excited to try it. Yeah, um, so, so Strawberry Jam is, uh, I also made that because I wanted to, I guess I just wanted to uh, prove to myself and others that I can make more than just action games, because... Mm. And you're known for sci-fi action yeah, kind of things. like, my games are mostly known for explosions and easter eggs. But, but people um, don't really know that you're super like anti-violence <laughs> even your violent games have mostly robots <laughs> like in Princess Peach and yeah uh, the only game with blood is EG and uh, even then it's uh, not very realistic I mean it has a place there and more importantly the story itself have pacifist elements yeah of course yeah. Uh, and uh, so I feel like Strawberry is kind of it's it's a very pacifist like there's no action well, or violence and yeah. they talk things out <laughs> <laughs> well that's because I mean EG takes place in a war setting <coughs> and the strawberry yeah. jam doesn't yeah. <laughs> it's a different world maybe there'll be some dark parts mm. in strawberry like in when future. I made when I made hero core um, it, w- it was fun to make it took three months but it was too easy I mean <laughs> there, there was no challenge in making that game um so Strawberry Jam was uh, very interesting in a lot of ways because of how difficult it was to make. But isn't that isn't that fun to, yeah, to realize you want to make a game and and then it's easy to make it <laughs> well, as opposed to a grueling nine year experience? Well, it, it is fun in a way. I mean, when I made Hyper Princess Pitch, it was also easy, but at the same time, it was fun to see it come together and make all the pieces. I think I made Princess Pitch in one year in my spare time. Mm. I don't remember what we were doing at work at the time. There was a whiteboard drawing with, with oh, Pitch yeah. from Garden of Carnage and it said you will shoot bricks. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, that, and that's, that's why she shoots bricks. <laughs> um, she actually shot bricks in the um, Garden in Garden of Carnage. Mm. No. I had the idea going around that I wanted to remake. I feel like I have talked about this on podcast earlier. Yeah, we were just retreading yeah. all over I, the place. I wanted to remake Operation Carnage and uh, then I saw that picture, you would shoot bricks, and uh, then I knew like, <laughs> exactly what this is. I want to shoot to. bricks. Some, sometimes, you will shoot bricks. Like, every time I finish a game, I'm like, God, I <laughs> never want to make another game again. Mm. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired of this now. But then... But then um, because, no, no. because I can't think of anything more to make and then all of a sudden okay now I have to make this but, and now we have the Christmas break coming up and then of mm. course you're gonna have some spare time at home yeah I'm working on uh, another project and after that I have yet another project that I'm thinking of planning and designing otherwise I may I may take a look at Strawberry Jam chapter 2 mm. that chapter also includes a character that's uh, like all the characters are static fruit with um, animating uh, faces that are separated into eyes and mouths. Uh, this one character, however, is a ragdoll that's more humanoid and uh, manually animated, so that's going to be tons of extra work. Cool. So how, how has the reception been for Strawberry? Well, people like it, but nobody knows about it. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's much harder these days, like when you yeah. made India. Basically, yeah, when I made AG, it was a smaller... When I made DG, it was enough to make a game. Mm. That was enough. People were like, holy shit, this guy someone, made a game. <laughs> someone made a game. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was also an amazing game, obviously. So well, it helps. Yeah, people like Strawberry, but um, the, res- the reception hasn't been very big. Let's talk about Gunnel Vision first. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 
and that happened during uh, block jam. the yeah it's called the block jam this year and it used to be called mojam and one year it was mm-hmm. called the ebola yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it was called mojam dash ebola jam oh, so it, it was anti ebola <laughs> <laughs> so it is the mojam yeah block jam was uh, organized by mojang and humble and block by block which is an organization Mm. The, they just keep rema- re- renaming Mojang, but we're always there, always winning. Mm. We're always <laughs> winning. <laughs> winning. And, um, no, we didn't even try this time. <laughs> we made Princess Remedy last year, and that's one of the best rated games on Steam. And, <laughs> and, and this year we made Gunnel Vision, and not only did it, uh, quote-unquote, win, win the jam, but also <laughs> someone on Twitter says it's the best game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's on the non-existing box. Yeah, a quotation. Someone on Twitter. Someone on Twitter said, "I like." They even have a Twitter handle. I can put mm. this. Uh, and so the um, theme was insanity. Yes. Mm. And we went from there on the whiteboard. We went with like a, a crazy gameplay overload kind of insanity. Mm. Yeah, we wanted to make a game that sort of was became more difficult to play um, because you collected too many guns. Yeah. Uh, so the game plays like uh, Doom or Wolfenstein, yeah. mm-hmm. but you you look through a circular sort of window and then you pick up. First, first you don't even have a hand, so you pick yeah. up a hand and then mm-hmm. you get you can you punch know, people. You can punch people. And then you pick up two hands. You can punch <laughs> people two times. <laughs> then you pick up a, a gun and it just adds. So mm-hmm. for every gun that you pick up. You have all of them yeah, on the screen. So you yeah, have shooting at the ma- same time. Yeah, exactly. So you have ma- like several hands with several guns, or just punching in there, and you just hold down the hold down the shoot button and let <laughs> let yeah. like a flurry of and shots and blows <laughs> rain down. And favorite. they all stack up around in mm. this sort of circle. Yeah, the reason yeah. for the circle is because we tried stacking them in a. A rectangular view, but it didn't work. Yeah, so we but, but it it end, ended up adding to it because yeah. of how how visual it looks <laughs> when it's yeah. Yeah, just yeah. making a spiral of of, of like missiles mm. and shots going off in, yeah. in like a hypnotic pattern. It, and it the worked well with the the gear going around, yeah, like mm. with the old school style. Yeah. And and the more guns you have, the the smaller the window and the, the circle in the middle <laughs> that you can actually see through. Mm. Uh, so you can the basically combat. just see one enemy at a time. I really love the enemy design and sounds because they're very retro and we very tried to go for a super weird. super doomy style. Yeah. So we even took photos of things to yeah. cover the weapons over. Yeah. So the, the I, scissor I, weapon, that's my hand. Yeah, I, I remember. Stand. I remember. It's like the scissor is super funny yeah, it's in the, the best game. Weapon. <laughs> but it's, we, I saw it happen live on, on stream. Like <laughs> you just picked up the nearest object in our. Oh, it's a scissor. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best weapon. There's a level that starts with you pick up a scissor, yeah. then you walk up to a guy and, it, and it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good sound. <laughs> so, and some of the guns were like uh, Nils, uh, he does a lot of uh, filming of like gore movies and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. That's, prop guns. That, that's what I meant before that, that turned out you were insane because you're into B movies and <laughs> you, have, you, you made some pretty wacky stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that's that's uh, bes- beside game. It's one of my my passions. So I got a lot of like prop guns and and like old special effects left leftovers laying about my house. My house like a insane person. <laughs> so it's yeah. good, good because yeah, sometimes it, they come to use. Like you know, got, got a lot so of like. If we ever want to make a live action trailer where we all <laughs> gruesomely die, then you're going to film. Yeah, yeah, and it's not not as an effect, uh, <laughs> but um, oh no. yeah, the 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 whole filming the hands uh, so that that's straight from from like what they did for Doom. Yeah. Mm. They they also had like um, yeah, they clay, had clay models and such, but we didn't have time to make clay mm-hmm. models yeah, so and uh, and like hand props. Yeah, so. the the enemies are freehand pixels. Yeah, they also had uh, toy guns in Doom, and yeah. our enemies are only animated from one angle. Uh, because they always yeah, face the, the player. Boards. They always see the player. They always face the player, and they have free frames. Yeah, it's actually like Wolfenstein. Those enemies also cannot turn. Mm. Uh, when they're shooting, they always shoot towards the player. Mm. Because yeah, it saves space and saves time. Yeah, we gameplay-wise, is actually kind of good. Yeah, it's 
quick. Yeah, and they're so. Cool. I like how there's friendly fire, even though they don't shoot back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. They can, they can um, shoot each other. So. And of course, it escalates to the final level. And I think the final level has around 20 shotguns, 10 rocket launchers, 5 mm-hmm. scissors. And you, and you have to kill 100 dudes. Yeah, 100 mm-hmm. dudes and one giant boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, triple I'm, exploding I'm glad we thing. actually. I mean, the game is short, but it's <laughs> it feels like a good progression of yeah. the of the like <laughs> craziness of it. Yeah, every level you lose all the guns so that you can uh, try a new gimmick. The next yeah, level. you don't have any ammo or anything. You so you yeah. you yeah, it's just I mean every gun should have had its own ammo counter. <laughs> <laughs> we we play of course the the guns don't reload and they don't have ammo because why would they? I would have loved a, a reload where you just reload hand. all the shotguns and the rest flies the shells. <laughs> I would love a, I would love a reload for the hand where you like copy the yeah, <laughs> shell from crack the knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> That's gun <Gunnel> vision too. <laughs> So Gunnel Vision was released uh, as part of the Humble Bundle for charity through that Block Jam event, but uh, it's been a while since then, so mm. just yesterday we released it for free on HIO, so anyone can just download it and try. I a think a lot of people on Twitter seem really happy about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very <coughs> retro, and I also think it's the first game we made where we use our Vocaloid. Because ah, yeah, right. yeah, the there's, song, the there's one song running for the whole game, so when you're fighting the boss with like 40 guns, suddenly the Vocaloid starts singing about plasma guns. Mm, yeah. <laughs> because we, we bought a Vocaloid for Matthias, or programmer slash musician, at, mm. one pla- at one point, but we never used it. Mm. Uh, he, he made some cool songs, but this is the first time we used it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the song the song is goes like through like four <laughs> genres. Like yeah, yeah. It, it goes through a lot of genres. Yeah. So it's <laughs> it's a constantly shifting mood. Bun 2 is out on, it's been out for a few years on Google Play and App Store, but uh, Apple said, well, this is not downloaded often enough, we're going to remove it from the <laughs> App Store. Uh, and well, That was my, my first game I did, but no, not, not the first, my, uh, my first game I did by myself for Ludosity mm-hmm. was Boonie Bon 1. Yeah. I, I was thinking like, what's the simplest game you can make for a mobile, and it's like a bunny that automatically bounces up and down and you can move him left and right ra- left and right and it's super hard like mm. uh, super punishing game bounce them bounce them up yeah. mm. uh, so Boon Bon 2 is the sequel which just it's like a it's basically a remade in unity and uh, yeah. just sort of it's a uh, nicer graphics and more levels and it, there, it doesn't share any levels with the first one but uh, the gameplay is almost identical yeah and um, so well and um, even before Apple took it down, uh, I had this idea to like re-energize it or t- try to make something with it. Uh, so the idea is to make it free and have some sort of free-to-play model. Uh, we're going for ads. So right now we're remodeling the game a little bit and it's going to relaunch probably before Christmas again. I think it's good for us to test a few different like for free-to-play models. Yeah. We, we, no, we never really know what to do with our mobile games. We made a few, but uh, we're kind of just flailing like, out there. E- even, even something like uh, Card City Nights sold more on Steam than on... Like, even more copies on Steam yeah. than on iOS and, and Android 
combined. Wait, I'm gonna punch the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Which is strange. So, uh, and we always talk about the evil of free to play, and we're always scared to do those kind of things. I, th um, I think it can be done in a nice way. I think a lot of games do it nicely. Uh, obviously, Team Fortress is a good example. But so this for this one we're going for ads, yeah. and we're gonna show ads uh, every few deaths or so yeah. in the game. Not not too annoying. Hopefully. Not too annoying. There's also a minimum time limit, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you die five times. It's, not, it's not just deaths. No. Because that would be horrible. Because you <laughs> die a lot <laughs> later on. <in> yeah. <laughs> I think it also becomes more lenient if you stay on the same level. I think Stefan said. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we, we try to be nice about it. And the first Boone one, we made it completely free after a while, mm -hmm. since it wasn't selling either. And since it became free, it's actually had like uh, at least 10,000 downloads, I think. So mm -hmm. maybe Boone one 2 can have a new life. Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I just want people to suffer. <laughs> 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 before Christmas um, we should mention of course it'll do two has launched yes. but we're gonna make a much longer podcast about that later on yeah there's so much to say there's so yeah. much to say we're gonna talk about the reception we're gonna talk about the different like what we tried to improve from the first one to the sequel etc <clears throat> so that's going to be a separate, uh, separate podcast. Uh, but you can play it before that. You can Steve play it on right Steam now. On Steam and Xbox and yeah. PlayStation. We Good may. plug there. We, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, may, uh, we may talk a bit about spoilers the next time. Yeah. When it comes to Italy 2. There's a lot of secrets in Italy 2. A lot of secrets. Oh, I love secrets. Daniel um, went nuts with that. Um, yeah, the thing is, I really like secrets, but uh, at the same time, hiding too many secrets is like... Um, when most people won't see them, the game becomes shorter for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah that's what I meant before. We, we, there's, uh, we're good at wasting development time. Yeah, there's kind of maybe half the content in it to do too is not mandatory. Mm. Personally, I like that in a game. Um, and I'm glad we did that. I mean, I spent a lot of free time adding secrets, so it wouldn't waste development time. Um, you, could, you could say that a lot of modern games are an even smaller percent of mandatory. If you just go straight for the main quest, yeah, it depends like on the type uh, of game. In a Ubisoft game, not, not in a Final not in a 15. game like uh, not like Call of Duty, oh. which mm -hmm. is just oh. a roller coaster. Yeah, that's not in a game like a game. Skyrim. But a game like Skyrim. Yeah, not in a game like Zelda. Mm. It the two is kind of like an open world game, <laughs> <laughs> so, almost. Um, but let's talk more about it'll do, it'll do two next time. Um, and right now, so we we did some patches on it'll do two. We're gonna do one more, I think. But it's a bit trickier to patch since there's consoles. In yeah, world. but mostly yeah. we've been working on Card City Nights two. It's mm. always night in space.
always night in space. Oh, that sounds like a slogan. Mm. It's almost like we plugged it up <laughs> <laughs> that slogan on the previous uh, podcast. And we're also gonna make a bigger podcast about Card City Nights 2 at a later date. Uh, I think the, the main thing I want to say today is that we're gonna have something out before Christmas, something like a beta. Uh, mm. We're gonna launch the web page and a beta and a mail sign up and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, so Season you can 2 hope. is pretty far along. It's, it's pretty far along. That's online play. Uh, the the Card City Nights 1 was launched on um, Valentine's Day 2014. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it was. And, um, and the sequel is hopefully going to launch two years anniversary for that. CCN1 is this weird threw away game, it's like, what are mm-hmm. we gonna do? Well, I guess we'll make this game. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think it had a very good reception. We, mm. we also did a patch on Valentine's Day one year later. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah. But we, it was a pretty ambitious patch. But we, we already spent two podcasts going through CCN mm. in, no, we're not gonna in talk excruciating about detail. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just flagging for future podcasts, we're going to talk about It'll Do 2 extensively, Card City Nights 2 extensively. Um, but let's leave that for now. Uh, when I was a kid, after playing Quake, um, like I drew these uh, game design ideas for my own games, and one of them was a 3D game called Fnatic Killer 3D, which was of course like Quake, but there there was a power up which uh, um, which made the character grow three extra arms, and the idea was that um, whatever weapon you were holding was multiplied times five and held. Pretty, pretty much exactly like in Gundal Vision, coming in from all the sides of the screen. Mm. And the, um, when we made Gundal Vision, uh, the idea actually came from there. <laughs> so I'm glad it, I'm glad it um, uh, came to some sort of use. <laughs> mm. yeah. um, but, cool. the, but the last thing we were gonna do... We're gonna yeah. What are we playing now? Yeah, we, we just finished up like yesterday <coughs> finished up we, we always play weird retro games during mm. lunch yeah and lately we've been playing Akon wait I'm gonna look at yeah. the box <laughs> the spelling yeah let's see Aconcagua and Aconcagua is a, a real mountain mm. in uh, mm. South America exactly and that's where this game takes place so yeah. it, it's sort of a is it the, the game uh, adds like a fictional country right. and, like inserts it into South America in a real world setting and the gameplay is, and this is on PlayStation 1, yeah, and the Japan, gameplay Japan is... Japan exclusive game, seemingly yeah. published, maybe made by Sony? Yeah, I think so, made by Sony. Uh, and um, sort of like Resident Evil uh, Dino Crisis kind of game. Mm-hmm. The graphics are kind of like that, but the gameplay is more like an adventure game, where yeah. you click and pick up stuff. Yeah, the, it's, it's... There's no action. Yeah, it's like... A well, there is action. <laughs> yeah, there is action, but in in like a, a Sierra Sierra style action. But a yeah, lot of people use are use by something them. something on someone, and they but the the game is somewhere like the old PlayStation Clock Tower, or uh, and you kind of mash that together with something like um, the first Metal Gear Solid or something yeah. in like the gear graphics style. The, the gamepad controls only a mouse pointer. Yeah, like you click on things. You also can change characters and they can talk to each other. Sometimes they have to share information. Mm. I think it's very interesting. It's a pretty short game. It's very ambitious with, yeah. the, with the story. I mean, yeah. but I mean, the graphics the, are good for the time. The, <laughs> the uh, yeah, uh, the voice acting is of course horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> 
I work for Actually, a multinational but corporation. <laughs> I mean, the story is kind of nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it, uh, it keeps... Um, it keeps um, like it, that it stays that, serious. Like that part where, where Julia reveals she's a CIA agent, and they're like, why would the CIA care about this? And she's like... Well, we we want this uh, revolution to succeed because then USA can move in and have their companies here. Like, don't be naive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the story that's actually quite close to the truth. The story yeah, maybe that's why it didn't get... Uh, we wondered why this isn't mm. released outside Japan because it would have been successful. Yeah, and it's, it's a weird game because it's so multiculturally aware in the in the sense that mm. uh, everyone's voiced in their own like yeah. language. So, so Spanish and English. Yeah. Uh, yeah and subtitle in Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> it presents a very kind of realistic plot, but then it kind of goes bananas and you knife kill a lot of people, you throw a lot of oxygen <laughs> tanks into fire. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of weird because pe- people come off like psychopaths because because mm-hmm. they they can have like kind of down to earth conversation with each other and then they will just murder people <laughs> who tries to murder them so it also has the most amazing intro they're on a plane basically with this important person uh, and the plane is brought down by by an evil government kind of by a bomb mm-hmm. yeah the, the plane goes down on a mountain and the main character he wakes up and he's like uh oh, where am i oh plane crashed it's like snow. <laughs> snow. I must, be, I must be on a mountain, and he loves mountains. Yeah, they established in the in before they crashed. Uh, his his uh, like uh, buddy boy uh, sidekick established that. Oh, look at these mountains! You love mountains. <laughs> like your entire. Don't you remember that your entire life is mountains? Oh, you're so wacky! I hope, I hope the plane doesn't crash in the mountain. No, of course, like five seconds later, the plane cra- crashes in the name. mountains. His uh, buddy dies and says, "You can get a Pulitzer Prize if yeah. you survive this." Yeah, exactly. And he doesn't get a Pulitzer. Yeah. Like yeah. They, they leave that entire plot thread yeah. yeah. open. It's, it's very disappointing. Maybe yeah. he did get it. Just yeah. to yeah. reveal it. Yeah, it's, it's open for so interpretation. I would have liked the ending to be that he gets the Pulitzer yeah, Prize. because it, it, the opening is so amazing because mm-hmm. he's the the guy who dies. His his entire life is like setting up the main <laughs> characters' <laughs> like future. It says the main character like oh, this was no accident and if you get to the bottom of this you can win the Pulitzer Prize and then it dies <laughs> that's how my last words would be too. but I don't think the main character listens to him because mm. later on the main character is like maybe this wasn't an accident <laughs> or something like that you only heard the part he doesn't about the care about his friend I'm gonna have a mysterious last words when I die <laughs> like I'm gonna say something Just super deep, deep and mysterious <laughs> remember like, the scent of Jay yeah and I'm, I'm gonna like Hide something really <laughs> mysterious in a in a bank vault or something. Yes. And leave the key somewhere. Yeah, it will just be a, a shoe, a single shoe <laughs> or something. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do like with an Easter egg hunt. I think the game is um, kids. <laughs> the game, the yeah. game's uh, story is very serious, but it act- it plays out more like an action movie. Yeah, so exactly. It's it's weird. It's it's, uh, it's not at all bonkers like Metal Gear. It's more down to earth but it's the like an action boss, movie the final boss survives being electrocuted yeah. and shot yeah the, the final yeah. part feels like Metal Gear Solid, mm-hmm. both in like visuals and in like yeah. the whole the whole uh, bad guy on the helicopter yeah mm-hmm. the, like visually it's Metal Gear but in like a, a way, way I mean, more if, if you version. if you compress the story to just the key elements it's it's kind of interesting it's uh, it's mm. about uh, uh, Pachamama, who's uh, she's yeah. supposed to like unite the country, or yeah, she's, yeah, she's like a revolutionary, kind of revolutionary kind of guy, and she mm. they are brought down by the evil government, and, mm. and I mean the story is very there, short. Like a, it's all this drama on the mountain, but it's all about getting her to the to yeah, an event. Exactly, <clears throat> uh, and so that's kind of. I think people should try it because even if it's Japanese, the. Um, uh, the voice acting from the English characters are in English, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, the and Spanish characters are still in yeah. Spanish. Uh, and the like the interface, I- you can only, you can, the only interaction is like click on something and use one of your very few items. So it's always kind of can, obvious. You can brute force smooth the game mostly, yeah. even mm-hmm. if you don't understand uh, the Japanese. Mostly, text. it's very self-explanatory because they keep reusing the same kind of puzzle elements, but yeah. in different <laughs> configurations. If there's an oxygen so tank, mm. you are about to blow someone up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oxygen 
it, if, it, if it comes close to a fire, the entire tank will just explode instantly and kill and throw someone away. <laughs> out if, of if one of your items is a glove, then you know you're gonna <laughs> climb. <laughs> yeah, that glove is the best mm. item. Yeah, 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 it finds it right at the start and it yeah. just like keeps climbing with it. <laughs> Kato gets thrown into prison and just climbs out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think it uh, reminded me a bit, especially the front cover reminds me of a flag, which is an anime. Because like there's a, short a flag on the cover. There's, <laughs> there's a six episode anime series called Flag, I think it's six, um, which is about, uh, which is also about uh, a revolution and an internal war in a country where uh, the US and uh, Russia are trying to butt in and uh, have their way. Uh, of course, it also has uh, this uh, giant mecha. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, but unfortunately, you don't yeah, get unfortunately there. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't. But yeah, but um, but the mecha in that setting is like, it could basically be a tank. It wouldn't make a difference. Mm. You could just replace the mecha with a tank. But the themes are very much the same, and it's about retrieving a flag uh, that an insurgent group stole, and they're trying to impose their like a re- religious cult onto the leaders so, of the country. So it's, if you put a plot on a capture of the flag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's also like a, if you ignore that it has a, like a mecha and they're <laughs> trying to retrieve a flag, it's very, it's very serious and um, kind of brutal. It's, uh, it's shot entirely through camera lenses or uh, TV screens. Like all the footage is from cameras that sit mm. on on, aer- yeah. on airplanes. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, like, it's a found footage anime. <laughs> mm. It actually is because the whole thing is being retold by one guy sitting at a computer looking at all the footage he has received. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you guys want to do the thing we did where we go one by one what we've been playing? At sure. Home, um, what I have I have been playing Overwatch. Yeah. That's the you only thing. You I play remember. a lot of Overwatch. I, I play a lot of Overwatch and I love it. It's yeah. a r- it's the, the have the like the scene and the, and um, the players have 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 the scene like changed or anything over this time? I don't know if the scene has changed, but they do change. And I'm I'm very impressed with Blizzard how bold they are with changing their own games, uh, especially World of Warcraft. They sh- keep changing it, but also Overwatch. Like it's been out for. What like half a year, mm-hmm. uh, and they already changed it a few times, mm-hmm. and they added two characters, uh, changed how competitive mode works a lot. <coughs> uh, so I think, and I'm hopeful for the future. Like I think, I think it's going to be a, a a big one. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of stopped playing because I don't really like team-based games. I feel a lot of mm-hmm. pressure. I would like a deathmatch mode, and also I'd like to play. There Symmetra. are there. You should so you should play it again because they have. They, they were gonna change her. Sure, I heard they're gonna like overhaul Symmetra completely. Yeah. Um, um, but basically, I felt like I couldn't play my favorite character unless we were like on defense on certain levels, or people would get mad. Kind of. Right. Well, the the point is that you should change. Yeah, I know. I know that's the point. Uh, but but I, there I really are one on one modes as well. Like you can play one on one in in. There's a new mode now that's called arcade where mm-hmm. they. Um, I think Mat- Mat- Matthias mentioned that. He mm-hmm. said, like, uh, can we counter strike your die? They have a lot of different modes in arcade, uh, oh. and one on one is one of them. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> um, so I love it. I play Farah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I play Farah way too much. Um, She's really fun when you. And they, and they buffed her. Oh. <laughs> yes, so that's rains from above. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm playing. Cool. We should all play together sometime. Yeah. sometime again. It's difficult to find teams, though, as you say. That's the like. That's the number one thing about playing competitively. I can just, I could just play with five other randoms, but then it wouldn't be as good. It's not as fun. It's 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 not as fun and it's not as good. So when you play competitively, you're on the line, like. You're gonna go down in ranks if you don't play well, so you want to play with uh, synced up friends. <coughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm playing Overwatch. What are you guys playing? Daniel, um, I played uh, I played uh, Kirby Planet Robobot on 3DS, oh. which is when? Bi- 
No. <laughs> no you I mean, you haven't uh, mentioned it. No, it's basically Kirby go around ruining everyone's day, <laughs> just like always. <laughs> I think that's kind of when Kirby is at his best when he's a yeah. bastard. Like, <laughs> this is a setting where continuously there have been many, many eldritch abominations and uh, like outer cosmic horrors attempting to do something or other with the universe and Kirby has killed them all <laughs> <laughs> or ate them <laughs> he's the he's the biggest uh, biggest danger <laughs> what, what does uh, this um, this uh, game do in compared to like earlier um, Kirby games Kirby has like a mech yeah in some levels you can find a mech which can copy abilities much like Kirby can mm-hmm. And uh, then you solve some simple puzzles and defeat enemies and bosses. So it gets different abilities? Yeah, or? all the abilities are different when you're in the mm-hmm. mech. Yeah. And there are special boss fights when you're in the mech. Mm. My problem with the Kirby games are always the gameplay. I just don't like it. I don't feel any challenge. And I mm. I don't like the thing where he bounces when he lands. <laughs> like, well, the well, challenge it, is... It's, it's still a platform side scroll. Right? Yeah, it's still a platform side scroll. The... Uh, just like Triple Deluxe, the production values are extremely high. It's very well made. Mm. Yeah, they're and always uh, very, very nice looking and yeah. Awesome, and the, sh- awesome the challenge, nice the challenge goes up pretty gently. Um, it's very unlikely to defeat the final boss in either of those games when you first try, because they actually mm. become really difficult. And uh, or they li- uh, did you get to the last boss yet in this? Yeah, I've beaten it. Uh, Is he 100%. awesome like usual? Uh, yeah, uh, it's not. It's not like Zero Two. It doesn't have. It's not a an horrifying ex- bleeding eye. It's anything. not an exploding eyeball this time. Um, it, but if you if you pause the game during a boss battle, you can read uh, information about the bosses. <laughs> and um, there's uh, just like Triple Deluxe, there's like a boss rush called the Arena after you beat the game, which isn't too difficult. Then there's the True Arena where they uh, tie the difficulty to a spaceship and like launch it into a black hole because it's absolutely, utterly insane how stupidly difficult it is. Like, especially in comparison to the rest of the game, I have no idea how anyone like of, of the casual players are ever gonna beat this because that's, those modes always have like three to five special bosses you have never seen before at the end who, are, who take forever to beat. Mm. And you only have one life. And uh, there are abilities that let you uh, turn briefly invincible or even invincible as long as you're standing still. And I admit that's how I beat the true arena. <laughs> uh, because in um, Planet Robobot that also involves uh, like two flying shooter segments where you don't have that ability. Fortunately, they're not very difficult. Um, and if you play the true arena, you also meet the final version of the final boss, and if you read all the uh, pause menu information, um, even though the boss itself doesn't look very menacing, it's pretty dark what you're doing in that game. <laughs> you're basically annihilating the last, the, all the last pieces of someone's soul. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have to have to mention because um, that's like. It's the first time I can remember in a long time that a game really pissed me off. It's that the very final boss in the very final true arena has a final attack that uh, covers like half the screen, he does three of them, and they pierce invi- invincibility and are one hit kill. And so, so you're standing I, I didn't there thinking see, you're safe. Yeah, and, uh, and just <laughs> blam. Like, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> yeah. And then? I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy XV. Of course. Uh, I, uh, and you finally have a PlayStation 4. Yeah, I got it mostly for this. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I haven't really liked Final Fantasy in a while. I didn't like Final Fantasy X, and after that I didn't play any of them. I didn't think <laughs> 13 looked very good. It looked like 8 and 10 combined, and those are the ones I don't like. Mm. So uh, 15 I've always been very interested in. It also looks... looks it, but it also looks like these high fashion characters. Yeah, but it looks a bit more like uh, seven kind of, I guess. Mm, I so guess. It, it looks very. Yeah, I, I don't mind high fashion. It's the, it, the what I don't like about eight and ten is they're they like smashing together a lot of visual stuff. It's all it's pretty gaudy, like. 
uh, very high high fantasy kind of. I, mean, I don't mm. know how to describe it, but mm. I like the fifth scene a lot. I like the setting and the mood. It's like very down to earth and there. A lot of people like it. I've, I've been hearing good things on. I, I think if you don't like like the characters and their their like road trip and stuff, then uh, you might not enjoy the game a lot. Because if you just boil it down to gameplay and stuff, it's uh, it's okay, but. Mm. Uh, side quests can be kind of annoying and things like that, but uh, if you if you like this road trip thing, then it's it has an amazing. We should mode. make a road trip game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we had one planned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we actually Since talked before. about that before. Um, Anton made some um, concept art of like a party seated in a car going for a dungeon, and then like a week later, they <laughs> <laughs> revealed Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Final Fantasy XV looks really chill, like the picture, the early picture of them like grilling, uh, grilling some sausages, like having a beer by the side of the like a desert road, looks <laughs> looks really uh, really yeah. chill. It's yeah. really nice. You go around. So the are are you even even saving the world? Uh, you are fighting an evil empire. Oh, so you're not on a road trip specifically. Because but you do you do need to have a beer and chill and barbecue mm -hmm. yeah. even even if you're saving the world. The first thing yeah. that happens is that you're being sent away to to marry this girl to like bring peace to the world or whatever <laughs> between these countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you are a prince. Yeah, but your car breaks down and the evil <laughs> empire invades your country. <laughs> so unlucky, no, no so unlucky. Oh, too. Yeah, mm. like yeah, and a lot. Of, there's just a lot of little cute things when they like uh, camp and stuff at one point uh, the, the or car stopped and a car at the other side stopped and then like a bunch of snake monsters just went across the road and then cars <laughs> went on again. it's like uh, cross snakes cross. so do you see snake crossing. do you see monsters in the other cars driving no it's, it's oh. people oh I'm sorry no Marlboro driving around <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, but so you like it yeah mm. just uh, even like just going in the car, the, like yeah, it's a it's a good feeling to. Are you like, I have, it? I, I, yeah, I haven't beaten it yet, but I think I'm getting to the final half now. Mm. It may it may fall apart there. I think people say it goes a bit fast and there's like an annoying sequence, but I think I'm gonna uh, finish it and it's uh, makes it make it made me hype about Final Fantasy again. <laughs> like, I want to yes. know what Final Fantasy 16 is now. Mm. I'm not uh, depressed about uh, <laughs> the brand anymore. Yeah, like, I'm... The last time I was hyped for a Zelda game was Twilight Princess, and then I was disappointed. Mm. And then um, I had uh, zero expectations for Skyward Sword, and I kind of liked it. Uh, and I haven't finished Skyward Sword yet. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I had zero expectations, mm. and that game has a lot of moments where like, oh, this is so cool, and a lot of moments where it's like... This is so uh, tedious. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to the new Zelda, because yeah, any, me too. anything they do to change Zelda is positive for me, because I've already played the same game so many times. Yeah, now. I agree. You guys are pretty big fans of this. Yeah. I mean, I'm a super big fan of Zelda, even though I hate a lot of the uh, <laughs> yeah. installments. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're still, at their core, they're still fun. Yeah. Even the ones I don't like as much, I mean, they're still fun. Yeah, but if, but if, you, if, you're, if you're a fan of something, you're also going yeah. like, to criticize mm. something. Yeah, because you, you want it to be better. Mm. So, Nisa, what are you playing? Yeah, I'm, I've been thinking, the, mo the thing I've been playing the most is I picked up um, Tower of Doom for the Intellivision, I brought it <laughs> here like one time, it's... That's the final fight then into the dragons thing? Uh, the beat them up? No, 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 yeah. no, that's that's the arcade. In oh. the Tower of Doom oh, for Intellivision. the Intellivision, it's yeah, that's the stick mm. figure roguelike. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, um, but that one, that one I've been playing a lot because I brought it here and and didn't like get get into it a lot. It mm. seemed it seemed kind of like yeah, it's it's a clunky rogue like. But now I've given given it a t some time and actually been like trying out the like ten classes or something that's in the in the game and kind of appreciate it for its ambitiousness for like an early eighties game and being a being like a very early console RPG. So. 
you play a lot of uh, retro games, a yeah. lot of old games, and a lot of obscure obscure games. Yeah. Uh, is it is it to sort of just add them to your internal library, or is it? Um, to I, s- I kind of, I kind of have an interest in seeing what else there is because mm-hmm. you I I mean when when you look at like games me, media and stuff you you get the often get the idea of, of many many games and it uh, with like early 80s games and such that kind of comes into my general like f- interest in like antiques and stuff and with the, w- it is is not yeah, yeah man, <laughs> listen hear me out hear me out <laughs> that, that it is is not antique but it's uh, it's like some of the earlier earliest of of like a single media mm-hmm. and it's also like a playable world that you can still like you, you can still live uh, the so the, ta- so the so tower it's like of an old world you can read yeah exactly you can live you can you can live you can live tower of doom today like you could for we could um, when it was uh, newly Mm -hmm. made you can like with an old with an old um, like item like an old watching or something you can get an idea of the society here here you can get like the idea of of the uh, of the game world and and what what's you, you get an insight in like culture like game culture so that's that's an interest there, and um, also like really old games have really crude graphics, which makes yeah. perhaps it easier to to imagine what it should look like and and, and have yeah, those ideas. Like, yeah, but uh, making Princess Remedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and it's it's interesting because they they spent a lot of lot of time on like the packaging and all the all the mm-hmm. lore and stuff and and try to compensate in that way. So it's. It's interesting to see, and the manuals—they had so much lore in the manuals. Yeah. Like, oh, that—that's what the yeah, game is about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why why we put so much uh, shit like that in, uh, in Quest Forge. Yeah, um, mm. yeah, but you—you uh, you can't really s- see that too much about uh, the game itself. The other game that I've kind of stopped playing now is—I uh, don't know if I've mentioned Pathologic on the on earlier games. Yeah. I've heard it. Is it like a new game? Well, uh, they they are remaking uh, oh, remaking it. Uh, the original game is from two thousand five, and it's um, pathological. It's, yeah, pathologic. It's um, um, it's a Russian game, and, and it's oh that one. Yes, that one. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing, picking that up again, and trying to playing it. But it's a it's a game that is very interesting because it's an it's a vision like a visionary game. It yeah. combines so so many like. Uh, elements uh, and uh, trying to combine like uh, adventure RPG like um, life simulation with uh, you have uh, you have a lot of like stats like hunger thirst and uh, uh, sickness and all, all those kind of kind of things that you have to monitor and the but the the main thing of uh, that makes pathologic special is that it takes place in this non-existing um, Kind of uh, like a, a Russian a post-industrial industrial town mm. in, in a setting, but it, the setting is is really warped and really uh, really u- unique. The like the people, no one no one um, acts like any any like person you, you would expect any person to be. But it's at first it all seemed random, but then you when you like talk to a lot of people you realize that okay it's just a very isolated very like intensely like interconnecting society that works in a in a, the the setting is crazy impressive but the game is also very hard to play because mm. uh, it's super stressful like you have it is the you have like uh, you play it in days and in a day, you have to make sure that p- some people don't kill each other. the The entire town is is like in a, like a snake's nest of like uh, pol- internal politics and like religions and sex, sects and different kind of like mutant subspecies and stuff and like this really unstable like uh, element. 
Um, mm-hmm. And there's a um, brooding sick. There's a sickness that comes into into the town, and the and like the entire uh, infrastructure slowly like deteriorates, and things get harder for you to, to like get your hands on like to, to for the everyday survival, and it gets harder to get time to get like rummage to through garbage and get, get stuff to, for yourself to your own survival and get enough resource to make sure that people you want to survive survives too so are, are they remaking it right now or is it yeah they are still re, they're okay, still so working they're, on, on it it's, it's like a early access thing no and they they made a kickstarter and oh, okay. they, is it is it the same people that yeah they think? it's the same i think that's people. good because so they they were I, I read an article about them and they were broke as fuck mm. and, yeah uh, and spent like years and years and years on that game yeah and it, it feels the it feels like a true like passion project that's mm-hmm. really really hard to get into i don't think i'll finish the game but i appreciate that it's a unique really bonkers like uh, game uh, that cool. will never be like there will never be anything like exactly like it again. Even though it, they remake it, I don't think it will be the same yeah. the same game mm. because it won't be made in the same time. And yeah, and, and they will probably not make it as like hostile, <laughs> hostile yeah. and and unforgiving. <laughs> mm. I don't th- I don't think I don't know. Uh, may- maybe they will. It's it's just one of those games that <laughs> you. You both, both the like the the mechanics are against you. <laughs> like you feel like the game mechanics are like to your own detriment, <laughs> but it also adds to like the the feel that it creates. Mm. Yeah, it's it's one of the more oppressive and <laughs> like harsher games mm. that I've tried and tried. So but it sounds cool. cool. I'm gonna yeah. check it out. Um, is that it? I think that's it. Uh, that's One the hour or something. Yeah, it's more than an hour, and this was supposed to be the quick. Mm, yeah, but, but, but our usual podcasts are even longer, right? Yeah, probably. probably. So uh, keep an eye out for the next. I think it's going to be it'll do two before we do yeah. Car City Nights two. Try to get some sort of uh, PR going. Yeah. Buy it'll do two. Buy it. Yeah, just <laughs> right now. Just buy it, like right now. Click right here where I'm pointing. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> we'll add something in the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, take care. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye, YouTube.